Some combinations of things just weren't meant to be. Other things go together in a much more natural way, such as the topics in AP World History Modern. And now that we've finished the foundational work in Unit 0, we turn to the first era of testable content in this class, the period 1200 to 1450. And this video is about introducing and combining those topics in an organized way, and to set you up for your next week of study. Now remember from the unboxing video that each time period in this course is made up of topics, and each topic has a page that tells us the learning objective and historical developments. And just in case you need them again, I put a link to all the topics of this course in the description to the video below. Here are the topics we'll look at in our consideration of the period 1200 to 1450. Now we could go through these topics one at a time in the order presented, but we tried that before. Man, it's it just it dang old complicated, you know, man? It's like a dang old Rubik's Cube. That's because so many of these topics are deeply connected to others, and it's nearly impossible to teach them in isolation. For example, we'll begin this era with a look at China. Yes, I know we discussed them a lot in our video on State Building Unit Zero, but China's very important this time period, and people are still talking about it today. China, 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 China. So look at topic 1.1 and its historical developments. We deal first with continuities in state building, or the political practices that China kept up from the previous time period. You should notice something familiar here from our Unit Zero content. China continued the practice of basing its government, or bureaucracy, on Confucian thought. Another historical development in this topic is the spread of Chinese culture and other beliefs such as Buddhism, and that Buddhism continued to take several forms. Remember, in the margin you often see a menu of illustrated examples to choose from to help you support these developments. One more historical development in this topic is about China's incredible wealth they produced in this time period. But notice that this topic goes really well with this one, Topic 2.1, the Silk Roads. China was a major participant in the Silk Road trade routes, and any discussion of China in this time period will spill over into discussion about that trade network. Also, China's culture diffused across this network, so there's a bit of Topic 2.5 here as well. So we're starting with Topic 1.1, but also touching 2.1 and 2.5, we're getting them all together. Reunited and it feels so good. And we're going to move through the other topics of this time period in the same way. After China, we'll deal with Islam, and you remember the two things you learned about Islam in the Belief Systems video in Unit Zero? Islam is conducive to trade, and it provides the basis for unification of people into large states. So along with Topic 1.2 in Islam, we'll also look at Trans-Saharan trade routes and state building in Africa, two topics inexorably connected to Islamic civilization. In South and Southeast Asia, which extend into the Indian Ocean, probably a good time to check out Topic 2.3, Exchange in the Indian Ocean. And when we study the Mongols, we'll revisit some aspects of the Silk Roads. I mean, they helped reestablish these. And since they spread diseases across those trade routes, we'll draw from Topic 2.6 as well. So that's how we'll move through the time period 1200 to 1450. Now to get you into your first set of topics in this time period, let's outline what you'll be doing the next few days. Here again are all the topics from the period 1200 to 1450. We'll look at historical developments and learning objectives from these three topics. I'll navigate you across them with a trail of primary sources for you to analyze and give you some secondary sources to read as well. And the tasks you perform based on these sources you'll enter into a Google form or submit through Flipgrid. Remember that the content you learn is part of a historical development that helps us perform a task or learning objective. If you've forgotten the relationship between these items, you might need to review the unboxing video again. For example, you're not just memorizing the bold type words from your reading, like Theravada Buddhism. You're learning it as an example of how Buddhism continued to have influence across Asia, and that it existed in several different forms, and how all of that satisfies the task of this learning objective. A learning objective? turned into a question, it's answered by the historical developments and illustrative examples. In the next video, we'll continue our investigation of relevant topic pages as we turn to Islamic civilization in the period 1200 to 1450. See you then.